I want to thank you for the folks who bought training. I want to say thank you for the folks who are about to buy training and shout out to the nerd tribe. One of the things that I find to be very interesting is that people do not want to follow the financial order of success. Now, what I mean by that, you will see video after video after video of YouTube of a content creator that was two years ago. I was a broke college student. Four years ago, I was a waiter in a restaurant. Five years ago, I was $400,000 in debt, almost ready to file bankruptcy. And then literally, you will see that these people now are claiming to be millionaires and they're to be financially stressful. That has not been my experience. One of the things that I had to do was get my personal finances straight before I saw future financial success. Once again, I'm going to say something. Most of these folks are YouTubers, TikTokers, and Instagram people. And I don't believe them. I do not believe that two years ago you were broke and today you are a multimillionaire. And I'm going to explain why. When I ended up homeless in that boarding house, I did not have extremely bad financial habits. I didn't have a drug habit. I wasn't a drinker, but I was the average person utilizing my money in the average manner. And one of the things that I didn't understand was the financial order of success. I didn't understand that you needed to get your personal finances together before starting a business. I had no clue. And because I lacked that understanding, even though I didn't have demonstrably bad financial habits, I wasn't in a position to capitalize because I was the average person utilizing my money in the average manner. The financial order of success, the order of steps that you should take are number one, you should clean up your personal finances. I'm about to speak to the folks with bad credit. There are a ton of videos here on YouTube talking about getting a CPN, zombie debt, age corporations. All of these videos are aimed at people who currently have bad, atrocious credit. And they're aimed at these people as a quick solution to get around having bad credit. And here's the thing. As a person who once had bad credit, I'll even share the story with you. Got divorced. There were some things that my ex was supposed to take care of. And there was things I was supposed to take care of. I took care of the stuff I was supposed to take care of. My ex, she did. And because it was a joint account, my credit went bad. And at the lowest point, my credit was like a four 20. There was a repossession on there. There was charge offs. There was all kinds of stuff on my credit report. So I found this board called creditboards.com. It still exists. And I studied it. So I would go to work, then I would come home and spend two to three hours working on my credit, researching. There was a guy called Doc, Credit Doc, and there was some medical collections and he had a process to get medical collections off of your credit report and it worked. So from a period of eight months, I went from a 450 to a 720. Getting this garbage off my credit reports, it was true, it was factual. So I share that story with you to say that if you have bad credit, if you do the work, you can fix your credit. And that's going to be the first step in the financial order. Number two, if we have good credit, maintain our good credit. The second order is to optimize the money that you already have. Now, what does this mean? All right, let's say you're making 5,000 a month. After taxes, you bring home 2,500 bucks every two weeks and you have a car payment. Maybe you have student loan payments. Maybe you even have credit card debt, right? And you, at the end of the month, literally because you have a lot of expenses, you have a lot of bills, you have a lot of payments. Even though you're getting $5,000 a month after taxes, $60,000 a year, you have no money, you have no savings, which means that your money isn't 
optimized. So number one, our goal is if we bring home 5,000 per month, our goal is to live on 2,500. This is what I call the 50% solution. And this isn't something that you're going to do really quickly because you're an average person living an average American life, spending money like the average American. So what you would do is set a goal where you will whittle down your expenses to where 2,500 bucks a month pays where you live, buys food, put gas in your car, pays all your bills. So what does this mean? You're going to have to start getting rid of some stuff. I'm about to go Dave Ramsey on you. You're going to have to get rid of your car payments. You're going to have to get rid of any debt. Once again, I will share something with you. Years and years ago, when I got in the storage auction business, this is how we did it. I had a business partner and we split the profits 50 50. And in the first 18 months, we were making decent money, but nothing compared to what was to come. And I remember our first $40,000 month it was 20,000 for her it was 20,000 for me. And my, at the time, my bills were literally 2000 bucks a month. That's what my bills were. And I did not go out and get a penthouse or, and I, I was driving a BMW that I paid cash for. And I found it very easy for me to, cause this is one of the things I started doing. My bills to pay for my bills and stuff was 2000 a month at the time, child support that included child support. So I started investing $10,000 a month in the stock market. In a matter of a few years, I had a seven figure portfolio cause I was investing 120 in the beginning, then that went up to $200,000 a year in the stock market. So the reason that my stock market portfolio was seven figures wasn't because of interest or my money working. Because when you know, this is a term you hear on YouTube, your money should be working, your money should be making money. One of the things I found out during that experience that your money making money unless you have a lot of money. And I'm not talking about a few hundred thousand. I am talking 10 million. Unless you have millions of dollars. Let's go ahead and break it down. Let's say 3 million and 3 million at 10% is $300,000. That's your money working money. So you need 3 million up front because I learned because, you know, I got gas up on the stock market and everything. And I, I just realized that me running a business, I was making way more money than my investments. So at this point, I just started to save cash money in the bank, 50% of what I made. And over the years, it came, it got down to, I currently use 6% of my income to live and I manage my money well. So what you wanna do, the financial order of operations is get to a point where you can live on 50% of your income through a combination of getting rid of stuff and a combination of increasing your income. What I found out was the fastest way that I got to the 50% solution wasn't saving. It was making more money because uh, I remember that first $40,000 a month, I was like, man, this is crazy. Then I remember the first $60,000 a month, which was 30,000 for me, 30,000 for my partner. And you know, once I got into that, because while well, I was in the story production business, I made really good money. I think my best personal month was 70, 75,000. We had a month where we made 150,000 profit, 75,000 for me, 75,000 for my business partner. And that was the best month ever. And we only did that like once, but it didn't matter because that month where we're doing where I didn't make $75,000, guess what my living expenses were? Roughly about 3,500. So one of the things that you wanna do is learn the art of living on a certain income level and regardless of how much money you make, you avoid lifestyle creep because, you know, I, I will tell you my current situation. I drive a BMW X5M paid for, I just bought a brand new Porsche and I'll explain to you the Porsche. It was a Saturday when it was ready and I wanted to drive it home and they wouldn't take a personal check. So I financed the Porsche and it was $150,000 that I financed. And very interesting things happened. 
because typically I pay cash for cars, but I financed the Porsche and they told me not to pay it off quickly because then they start to have issues. So I'm going to leave this loan in place for one year. And but what I did is I've already paid a hundred and seven thousand dollars off that 150 balance and this is something that's really interesting that happened after that first thirty thousand hit my credit report that it was paid off my credit score which was at the time was like i hang out between 795 and 805 across the board well when that hit my credit report my credit score went up 30 points across the board so I'm like at 820 to 830, 835 on my credit reports. So I'm interested to see what's going to happen when this other 77,000 hits my credit report, which will be January 3rd, because you can only get an 850 credit score. Am I going to have an 850? We will see. But one of the things that you want to do, and this is in terms of credit, is when you use your credit card, you want to have the cash money in the bank to pay off that credit card. Now, whether you choose to pay off that credit card, that may be different because like I had the cash money in the bank to pay off this card, but I'm going to leave it on my credit report because now I have a $150,000 automobile loan on my credit report. Now, why would I want to do that? In the future, I'm thinking about starting a moving company, which means that I am going to have to buy a moving truck. Guess how much a moving truck costs? 105 to 120,000. So you see where I'm going. The financial orders of success, the first step is manage your credit, fix your credit. Number two, achieve the 50% solution. And then what you want to do, and this is where I'm at. I no longer use my personal credit. I've got a bunch of credit cards. Matter of fact, I'm going to, these are, these are my credit cards. This is my bank. And so I have a number of business credit cards that I use in lieu of my personal credit card. I have one, two, three, four business credit cards with American Express. Five. I have nine business credit cards and I do not use my personal credit, which is one of the reasons that my credit score was very high. So what you want to do is move from using your personal credit to moving all of your credit obligations to business credit. Now, why would we want to do this? If you do this, whenever you need to use your personal credit, such as to buy a house or to buy a car, number one, you're going to always get the best rates. Number two, you're never going to have to worry about your credit score because it will always be high. Currently, I am in $250,000 worth of hidden business debt doesn't reflect on my personal credit card. I want you to think, let's say you were an average person and you went ahead and got yourself 10 business credit cards and you transferred all of your personal debt to your business credit. And there was virtually no utilization on your personal credit report and your personal credit report stayed like that at all times. What do you think your life would be? Only reason to, uh, I use my personal credit to get more business credit. Right now, I'm in a season of gardening because I opened up a lot of accounts last year. So in 2023, I am not putting out any applications for anything other than a business credit card. I will not be adding anything to my personal credit because one of the things I'm getting ready to do is open up a chase line of credit. And if you are over 524, which means if you've had five open accounts in the last 24 months, you cannot get any of Chase's personal credit products or any of Chase's business credit products. So I have to wait a while before I can sign up for anything at Chase. And since I personally bank with Chase and have a lot of money in Chase, that's my plan for 2024. See, I already got 
I already know what I'm doing in 2024. But essentially, this is the financial order. This is the financial steps that you should do that you should be achieving because this is going to make a huge difference in the quality of your life, the stress level of your life. It's going to be a huge, huge difference in how you feel. It's going to make a huge difference in how you are financially, because I want you to think, let's just take this number one and number, you know, once you go ahead and also I, this should have been earlier in the financial order of steps, you should establish a long term emergency fund, a short term emergency fund and a family operating account. You should do this before you try to get out of debt. Why? We never know when calamity comes our way. And if you go ahead and start paying off debt and then something happens and <clears throat> you have no emergency fund. So that's why I advocate setting up your emergency fund. And once again, you want to have a year of money in the bank. So let's say you make $50,000. How much money should you have in the bank? 50 plus thousand. You should have your gross revenue in the bank. I know that sounds fantastical. And then you should have what's called a short term emergencies fund, five thousand dollars for the little incidentals. And then this is when we get to the family operating account with the family operating account. You have two months of personal bills in the bank at all times. So you pay your bills when they come in versus paying your bills when you get the money. So if you made fifty thousand and you had $60,000 in the bank. This will help you withstand virtually any financial crisis, layoff, illness. Let's say you got in a car accident and you broke your legs. Your legs are healing in three months. So if you've got that kind of money in the bank, you can weather virtually any storm, virtually any storm. So these are the financial orders of success. These are the things you need to do before you start a business. If you're broke, do not start a business. Once again, there are numerous stories of people like, oh man, I was broke. I had no money. And then I found this whiz G shigma dig thing. And now I'm rich and I got money hanging out my butt. For the average person, it is not going to be like that. One of the things that you need to understand is you must practice proper financial controls to have a properly financially stable life. This is why you must follow the financial order of success to be financially successful in the United States of America.